The first reading today is from Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. And it's found on page 1,227. <clears throat> then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to pro proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear not and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and the springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 46, and it's found on page 557. Please read responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading today is from Romans 3, verses 19 through 28, and it's found on page 1118. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Our reading will begin with verse 31 on page 1063. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, we are offspring of Abraham. We have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. 
the Son remains forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because of my word. My my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's begin this morning with a word of prayer. God of creation, thank you for this opportunity to hear from your word. On this Reformation Sunday, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, the words announcing freedom from sin, death, and the devil will be seen as a promise given to each of us. Be with us as we look again at the message of your word, that is, Jesus Christ. Open our hearts and minds that we might see that your word made flesh is the source of all the true blessings that we have been given. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our rock. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Reformation is an important celebration in the Lutheran Church. It is really a day when we celebrate receiving true freedom. As I'm reflecting on my first year of ministry with Trinity as your pastor, boy, that's hard to believe, isn't it? I reflect on the teachings that I've shared, and I think hopefully the foremost of these has been freedom. It's not a political freedom, nor is it a social freedom. But it is freedom from bondage to sin. Today's reading from John chapter 8 is one of the traditional readings from the Reformation Sunday as we find Jesus himself telling us of this freedom. In our reading, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This is a freedom that no governor, nor any president, nor any politician can promise, nor can they deliver. This is a freedom which Christ alone can give. This freedom brings to mind the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians, words which we often use in our confession and absolution, for freedom Christ has set you free. This is the message of the scriptures uncovered by the Reformation. By faith in Christ Jesus, before God, we are free. Saved by God's grace for the sake of his Son, by the power of the gift of faith, given by the Holy Spirit. True freedom by God's grace and mercy. Did you pick up the Trinity in that? By faith in Jesus Christ before God, we are free, saved by God's grace for the sake of his Son, by the power of the gift of faith given by the Holy Spirit. Because of the work of Jesus Christ on that cross, we are free from the guilt of our sins, free from the power of death to destroy us, and free to live our lives for Jesus and for our neighbors. As I said, this freedom is a gift from God. God creates this faith in us and he sustains this faith in us. And today's gospel is one of the places in the scriptures that speaks of just how God does this. If you abide in my words, you are truly my disciples. But what does it mean to abide? It means to remain in, to to dwell in, or to be at home in God. To do nothing but to trust in the Lord alone is to abide. Abide is not what we do. It is who we are. The message that we've been hearing for the last years is that it is God who works faith in us. And he does that through his word alone. We read in Romans chapter 10. Faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing through the word, word of Christ. 
We can find faith nowhere else than in God's word because it is in the word that God not only creates this faith in us, but it is in God's word that our faith is continued. Faith does not come from inside of us. It always comes from outside of us. This is, what this is saying is that for faith to stay alive, not just strong or growing, but to remain a living faith, we must abide in the word of God, and God's word must abide in us. The longer we stay out of God's word, the more we allow the busyness of our lives to keep us from feeding our faith by taking in the very bread of life, the weaker that faith becomes. And that is the reality. See, here's the thing. Faith that is not nourished by the word will eventually die. The word of God is the air that faith breathes, and it is the fuel that faith burns. Without the word constantly nourishing and sustaining our faith, that faith dies. Jesus tells us in John chapter 10, verse 28, I give them eternal life and they, shall, they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Well, that's very true. However, scripture also speaks of people who turn from God on their own. Our Lord Jesus quoted scripture when he was tempted by Satan. We read in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God, the Holy Spirit, spoke through the words of Isaiah 55, for as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eaters, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of God is that fuel which keeps the church alive. The church that fails to preach the word is the church that will die. It doesn't matter how many programs a church has, nor does it how much it focuses on bringing a particular age group into the church. If the church fails to proclaim God's word in all of its purity, the Holy Spirit will not bless that church because the Holy Spirit only blesses the truth. Never a lie. And with the Reformation, we have found that the Lutheran church is the church of the Bible. So without a show of hands, without a show of hands, how many of you regularly read your Bible? And I have to admit that even as your pastor, I, I could really read the Bible more myself. Now, I'm in the Bible quite a bit as I prepare messages for the week. That's true. But to take time abiding in God's word, this often eludes me as well. Do you ever wonder if the devil really knows the powerful, how powerful God's word is? Well, we read in Hebrews chapter 4, the word of God is living and it's active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Yeah, I'm sure that the devil's heard that as well. He knows that it is the living word of God that Jesus utilized constantly to defeat him. Of course the devil knows the power of God's word, which is why he works so hard to keep us away from the Bible. That is why he works to keep pastors focused on preaching anything but God's word. Social gospel in which we preach that it's our job to right all of the wrongs and injustices of this world and by our own human power create a heaven here on earth. But this prevails in this country today. Social gospel or any other gospel can be preached freely because Satan doesn't care about these things. They're no threat to him. There is no freedom in any gospel but that of Jesus Christ and him crucified. 
The devil does all he can to divide people from their pastors. Satan will do whatever it takes to keep us from digging into God's word because he knows that there is freedom in the words of scripture. Without the word of God, we remain slaves to sin. Which is why the crowd's response in today's gospel reading is so interesting. We are offspring of Abraham. We have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it you can say you will become free? It's almost as if they were completely oblivious to their current situation. I mean, all they had to do was lift up their eyes and they could see the Roman watchtower situated overlooking the temple. And in that tower would be a Roman soldier watching over them and over the temple. These soldiers would be a constant reminder that these people were subservient to the Romans who had conquered the nation of Israel. Anyone or anything which disturbed the peace was subject to being brought under control at the edge of a Roman sword. The reality of their current political situation is that they were slaves. But even worse, since these people did not see their need for the word of God, they were subject to an even worse kind of slavery than the one imposed by Rome. They were in total slavery to sin. Many professing Christians are might be in the same boat today. We offer opportunities to study the scriptures. We offer Bible studies, women's Bible studies and men's Bible studies, and we offer text studies. And I've actually been told, though, by people that I don't need to study the Bible. I've been confirmed. Or, Pastor, I went through Christian schools. I've learned all that I need to know about the Bible. Brothers and sisters, this is a trick of the devil. He wants us to feel that we do not really need to know all that much about the Word of God. When we think that we have learned everything that we need to know, that we no longer need to study God's Word, it's as if we're saying that God cannot teach us anything new. And if we hold this attitude, then when? Well, then we're despising the Word of God. When we listen to a preacher and we, much like in the audience of a movie, judge the sermon on how well it entertains us instead of hungering and thirsting for a deeper knowledge and understanding of God's word, well then, brothers and sisters, we're despising the word of God. But the devil works in other ways as well. Sometimes people will say, I don't want to go to Bible study because the Bible is just too hard to understand. The pastor might ask me a question that I don't know the answer to, and this Bible stuff just seems to go over my head. This, too, is a favorite trick to make us think that we're not smart enough to understand God's Word. You see, the truth is, the Bible has something for everyone, no matter their background. Its words enthrall little children and at the same time challenge even the deepest theologians. How does Jesus respond to the religious leaders and for that matter to anyone else who thinks that they don't need to spend time in God's word? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits a sin is slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. Every time Jesus uses that, that the phrase truly, truly, the Greek is hamen, hamen, where we get him in you know that he's making a statement that must be heard. You see, his words apply to all of us because as we read in Romans 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all slaves to sin. But then we hear the words of gospel, the Son remains forever, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Son of God himself is the truth that sets us free. He not only frees us from being slaves, but we are are turned from slaves into sons, adopted into God's own household. We become children of the Father. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You will hear me use the term up here many, many times, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what we are. That's not some newfangled term. That's who we are. We are sons and daughters of the living God when we believe. We are joint heirs with Jesus. Christ is our brother. All of the Old Testament points to Jesus. All of the New Testament points to Jesus. 
He's at the center of God's words. All of scripture points to the precious gifts that God gives us in Jesus, in the Son of God, the human flesh, crucified, died, and raised for our sins. The Bible is all about Jesus and what the Father gives to us through him. It is God's book. It's his words. His spirit has inspired its contents. And from the very first words of Genesis to the very last words of Revelation, the book preaches into our hearts and minds the truth that is Jesus Christ, and it is that truth which gives faith and keeps it alive. The truth is that Jesus is the truth which is heard from the Roman cross, the true word of forgiveness and word of freedom. Jesus speaks it on every page. Christ alone can speak the truth, for he alone has carried the sins of the world, even the sin of not listening to him and not wanting to hear what he has to say. Jesus has carried it all to the cross. All is forgiven. The, to, to know that truth is to be set free from slavery, freed from our callous disregard for God's word, freed to listen, freed to hear, to love, to treasure, and to keep God's holy word. This is why I've been looking forward to this celebration of this Reformation service. It's an opportunity to again announce the promises that have been proclaimed in our times together. It's a time that we can celebrate the freedom that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, gives to us as God's words, God's words tell us about his salvation plan for us. We celebrate because even though the devil constantly works to pull us away from God's word, the Holy Spirit works to preserve that word and will keep it, work to keep it through us in the one true faith. We read in the book of the Concord, that's the book that we Lutherans use as the Lutheran Confessions. We read, as Christ says, baptized people have been made free, it's in John 8.36, Therefore, we are not only able to hear the word, but also to agree with it and accept it, although in great weakness. See, and I've taught this, even to accept is the work of God. As we read in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace you have been saved by faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. We celebrate because the Holy Spirit will work within the Christian church to pull us back into the word of God. We read in the small catechism, I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or efforts believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel. Enlighten me with his gifts and sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. And in the same way he calls gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in one true faith. We celebrate that we hear again the Son say to us, go in peace, you've been set free. We are free from sin, from the power of death to destroy us, free from the condemnation of the law, free to live joyfully as a child of God, free to live in God's heavenly household forever. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. As we heard in Romans, faith comes by? Hearing. And hearing through? The word. the word of Christ. Freedom is ours as the Holy Spirit works through God's word and through his sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we feed on Christ's body and blood given for the forgiveness of sin. In words and in sacraments, we abide in Jesus. Hear the words of St. Bernard of Clairvaux as he writes of this abiding with Christ. He writes, I wish to follow with all my strength the lowly Jesus. I wish him who loved me and gave himself for me to embrace me with the arms of his love, which suffered for my stead. But I must also feed on the paschal lamb, for unless I eat his flesh and drink his blood, I have no life in me. It is one thing to follow Jesus, another to hold him, and another to feed on him. 
To follow him is a life-giving purpose. To hold and embrace him a solemn joy. To feed on him a blissful life. So brothers and sisters, please don't starve your soul, but abide in the word of Jesus. Only his word brings freedom and everlasting life. Through his word alone does the Son set us free. And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these are God's promises given for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.